the globe to bring you the constant variety of sports. The man is incredible. The thrill of victory. Absolutely the best. And the agony of defeat. Oh, look at him go! Oh, baby. Oh, no. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. It all started back in 96 at Walt Disney World. The IRL is about to have its 100th race, and what a ride it's been. At the line, oh, my Casper Nevis takes the win. Look at this. What a first-time winner. Green's Tony Kanaan is the current king of the jungle as he chases his first championship. Behind Kanaan sits 10 hungry drivers who are still alive in the drive. Time is running out and Nazareth Speedway stands as the next hurdle for these gladiators. At the checker, who will be in sight of Tony Kanaan and the ultimate prize in the IndyCar series, the Silver Cup. Firestone pre-race show. This is round 13 of the IRL IndyCar Series and the 100th event in the league's history. Today, it's the Firestone Indy 225. Well, Paul, take it in there in lap 150 and end up getting out there. That's 75 laps to go. It's a possibility. Depends on the length of this caution period. Todd Harris. Well, Sam Hornish is first in as your leader. They told me moments ago it's going to be fuel tight and a half turn in that front wing. And if you remember last week, Dr. Jerry had not reported that Ryan Smith, he was half the way to the And he never finally got into a problem. We've got another pit problem. She got a man on fire. You can see it. We got flames in the pit, guys. We got flames in the pit. Everyone's going for one. They're still trying to get that fire out. They pour water on them. Water will dilute the methanol fuel, and that will put the fire yeah, out. Yeah, you still got fires, though. A little bit of fire. You okay, Todd? Yeah, I did it. I did a Dan Marinelli like last time. I got fuel on me because he pulled away. They thought they had it out, and then he pulled again. It ripped the hose, and a massive amount of methanol came out. One man hit the deck. He immediately ignited, and you can feel the flames down here. You can just feel the heat burning. And all of us, we all went running, and everyone does a great job down here just grabbing buckets and dumping it on each other. But I think it's so far, it's like everyone's going to be okay. Of course, the dead man valve is up at the tank itself, and that lets go immediately, but there's still the length of the hose. But uh, And there's a fire on the car still. It's on the left side of the car. Yeah, you, can, you can see the fire right there coming out there. Remember, that's where the fuel, and that Buckeye is probably still open. Some of the fuel is probably still exiting out of the car right now. The radio would have been able to tell him that he's on fire, come on in. What he also can do, guys, is stop yeah, inside. Yeah, on the radio. I'm coming into pit lane. We got a fire. He can also stop on the racetrack in one of the fire stations, of which there is four around this racetrack. Well, if that, if that uh, Buckeye, no, easy, that easy, valve easy, is easy. Uh, open. What they don't want him though is out wide, out they do wide. not want him down the pit lane. They want him away from the fuel yeah. tankers. Yeah, he's got full flames on the left side of that car. It's just coming out, and it's exactly where the fuel goes in. So they're actually dousing him. The situation, though, is, guys, they had to stop him about 15 feet short of where he is because there's still fuel. And although it's been diluted, they don't want to run any chances of him re-sparking it. And that's the that's part of the point is that if that valve at the top of the fuel tank is opened in any way, then it might refeed the fuel. And look at how they get a crank on that fuel refiller, and that could damage that whole valving system. Oh, my goodness. Now, there's 
a major issue coming on ever since the Michigan race. If you can recall, there was quite a few pit instances there. As we watch this again, you end up seeing the car try to leave with the fuel Buckeye in, and this is when the problems happen. Guys, there has been many fines levied by Brian Barnhart, the vice president of operations from the IRL with these teams. He told these guys in the driver's meeting this morning, you guys have to take time. You have to slow down. No accidents are expected here today. You guys can do this correctly. The first bucket of water came over the wall from Roger Penske himself, who got right into fighting the fire. Todd? Well, here's the hose, guys. And you can see the force. This thing is extremely thick. It's okay to handle it now because it's been soaked. We've all been soaked with water for safety reasons. But here it is. The hose was in. It was connected. And like we've seen in the last few races, he started pulling away. And that put torque on this, unable to get away from it. And I don't know if he didn't get the full stop sign or what, but he went away. And it just shredded the hose. And the fuel just poured out. And I bet we lost a good 15 to 20 gallons. And that's what ignited. Now Roger Penske looks over the situation that has taken his car from the lead down to 12th place. In 12th place, we're going to show it to you again. It happened in Roger Penske's pit, Scott. Always a dangerous time during pit stops. You see the tires are finished. Right now, the fueler is still in. Now, Roger Penske or whoever on the team is telling him via radio, go, 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 or Sam has heard it. I'm not a fan of the radio system because anything can go wrong. And we see this here. If you have a right front man holding you back before he lets you take off, then he gets a chance to look over the car and make sure everything is done. The tires are done, the fuel is pulled out, and then he can release you. Different systems are done by different teams. But I have to tell you, I'm a fan of having the right front man stand in front of the car and then watch everybody oversee it. Now you can see the man running on the ground. Roger Penske gets the water, douses the driver, or the crew man rather. And as a driver, I will tell you, you feel real bad because you don't know what's going on in the pit lane right now and you're driving out in the racetrack. And then we saw Sam Hornish's car having a fire on it. Keep in mind, fellas, that Roger Penske doesn't wear Nomex. He's in a short sleeve shirt and still went after that to try and save his crewman. So can they get their guy, Elio Castroneves, up to the front? Or even Hornish Jr. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. He's on my list, though. And Scott, you're a country music fan, aren't you? Like all types of country music, some strong Canadian country performers, I might add. And caution once again. Oh, and this involves some pretty serious contact. Scott Sharp comes sliding right up to the camera in the Delphi car. You saw him had his hands off the wheel. Where was he, 40? He wasn't up on me, was he? No, I knew he was going to throw it in there last minute, dude. No, he just ran out of patience, man. That Sharp radio to his spotter, and he said he wasn't up beside me, was he? And he said, no, it looks like he just drove it in there hard and threw it in there. Of course, he is uh, Townsend Bell in the two car parked against the wall just behind him. Townsend has been particularly aggressive today. So our fourth caution, as they're running down pretty close to the end of the race, and Scott Sharp props himself up in the car. They want to make sure he's okay before they tell him to get all the way out. We talk about that yellow light the drivers see. There it is right there inside the cockpit that's always flashing. Let's go to Todd Harris. All right, thank you, Paul. First of all, Roger, is everyone okay? Everybody's fine. Yeah, we were lucky. Just one of those things. Everybody's pretty anxious to get away. And uh, fortunately, uh, we had a little bit of a fire here. They gave us a drive through, and we're back running again. But uh, disappointing. An auspicious day for you. Talk about Elio Castroneves and Sam, how they're running right now with the laps that we have left. Well, I think uh, right now, uh, you know, we're okay. We ran 21.5, pretty good lap here just a little bit ago. We got a lot of work to do to get to the front, and both cars do, but uh, we still got plenty of laps to go. Wish you luck. Be safe. Thanks. Paul? So, uh, Roger Penske still trying to get uh, one of his cars up as far as he can. Uh, Hornish would have a... Uh, a massive task to get from 12th up to the front, but Catherine Nevis is in fifth. Here is that situation. You can see the contact has already happened, possibly Bell trying to go underneath Sharp going into the turn and had already had Sharp turned around sideways. Now, as we watch Bell, going to peek inside, going into three where everybody likes to pass. 
just not up beside Sharp far enough. That right front ends up getting Sharp left rear. A lot of damage there. There he goes, getting the draft up of Sharp's car. Goes in front. And you can see Sharp's off the gas because he doesn't have great handling possibly. Very slippery turn down there in three. Yeah, Sharp is upset. <laughs> Dr. Henry Bach tried to pull him back. Uh, but Sharp, I would think, has a right to be upset. I mean, the obligation still with the guy that's doing the passing. Well, they always say spotters can let you know where the cars are around you. Spotters do not drive the car. So these two guys will end up having some conversation about this once they both get out of the car. But you would probably want to see Townsend Bell just a little bit further along the Delphi car, Scott Sharp. And then he will be saying, boy, I sure wanted some more space from Scott Sharp. He should have given me some more room. The spotter should have let him know I was there. So that's going to be a great conversation I'd like to listen to. Of the IRL has now been run in the final race at Nazareth Speedway. We've got some great images from the first 100 races in the Indy Racing League history. Jack's been at every one of them. Congratulations to Dan Weldon, the winner of the Firestone Indy 225. We're back in two weeks from today, Sunday, September 12th, live, 1.30 in the east for the Delphi Indy 300 at Chicagoland Speedway. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. And don't forget, tonight at 6.30 Eastern, ABC Sports brings you the Little League World Series championship game. I'm Paul Page for Scott Goodyear, Jack Aroot, Todd Harris, and Jerry Punch. We'll see you in two weeks. We hope you've enjoyed your time today. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television.